All right, fair warning to anybody who clicked on this video expecting to see a full WWE or TNA copyrighted pay-per-view or show. Not going to happen here. And if you're expecting to see a full show on YouTube, you're doing it wrong. Google it or there's another website where you can see full pay-per-views for free or shows. Please just leave the video right now if you do not enjoy wrestling reviews. You've been warned. Leave dislike. Don't do anything else. I enjoy this channel. I enjoy talking about wrestling. If you don't, that's on you. And it's your choice to be made. See you guys later with the wrestling review. What's going on, people? It's Mugen or OJ bringing you another SmackDown review. And this SmackDown it starts off with the Miz, Miz TV, as it should, because the Miz, he's from Cleveland, Ohio, or is he? He's originally from Akron, Ohio. Ziggler, he's from Cleveland, Ohio, but since the Miz was already there using the from Cleveland, Ohio, Ziggler let him get it, and he just says he's from Hollywood, California. A little trivia, in case you didn't know it. So it starts off with Miz TV. Miz brings out Mick Foley, and Foley asks Miz, which Miz are we going to see? Are we going to see the WWE Champion main event spotlight Miz, or are we going to see the bearded movie star makeup wearing Miz and Miz says you really don't have to worry about him you have to worry about the rest of the team he especially calls out Kofi about stealing his icy belt the whole tech the, they bring out the whole team for some kind of like team meeting or whatever and of course it blows up in their face they get into a not a wrong but a war of words Randy Orton comes up comes out and he knocks over Miz's poster Team Ziggler comes out, and Ziggler, he brags about how his team is more united. And Del Rio, he's on the sidelines saying that he should be the leader of the Survivor Series team because it matters for some reason. I don't, I don't know. Maybe that's just part of his character. Mick Foley, he made some matches on this. And here's the thing about these matches Mick Foley made. It's not that they're bad. It's just the fact of where they're placed. And how some of them were. Like, for example, okay, he makes a match between Dolph Ziggler and Dolph Ziggler, Alberto Del Rio versus Miz and Orton to solve some kind of team un unity problem between both teams. Instead of having Miz and Kofi versus Del Rio and Ziggler. And also, we get Wade Barrett versus Kane. I can deal with that one, but. It also leaves Daniel Bryan off of the card, so this is the only time we see Daniel Bryan, even though he's the most over man in the company. I think it also has to do with the fact that, who is it, uh, Cody Rhodes, he got injured, and he shouldn't, I repeat, he should not wrestle at Survivor Series because it takes a week to get over a concussion, but I digress. Damian Sandow, he insults Daniel Bryan, calling him a goat face, one, a goat face, one word wonder. And then he insults Kofi Kingston, call him a neon-wearing mute who thinks he can fly, which gets us to Kofi versus Damian Sandow. Now, that's not my tea. I got Kofi versus Sandow. Now, in this match, Kofi, he looked very strong. I'm talking about, he for the most part, he dominated Damian Sandow. It made Kofi look more like a legit wrestler than it did when he had the feud against the Miz. Now, I can see this Kofi Kingston versus Damian Sandow playing out very well in the future because it seemed like they played off each other very well. But as it goes, oh, yeah, Sandow, he had very little offense. I think he got in the elbow of this thing. I'm not going to try to say the Latin term of that, but Kofi, he gains the advantage. He goes for the trouble in paradise, and when you know it, he claps. Anytime you see Kofi Kingston clap, you just know he's not going to hit it. It's just like... Why even do it? So Damian Sandow, he avoids it. He clips Kofi Kingston's knees, and then he rolls him up. Mm, still, It doesn't hurt Kofi Kingston to lose this match because he looked good in the match. He looked dominant. He looked aggressive. looked strong. Damian Sandow, it builds on his character as being a smart, intelligent wrestler and not just some kind of power guy. So, yeah. Then you get Eve, Asana, and Alicia Fox versus Natty. Natalia, Caitlin, and Layla. Uh, what can I say about this match, man? Six, six uh, diva tag match. Uh, whatever. Caitlin hits the Scorpion Dell drop on Alicia Fox. Eh, not, not, whatever, man. Then you get 
the next match. Orton and The Miz versus Ziggler and Del Rio. And the only problem I can say at the beginning of this match, Ziggler came out before Del Rio. Really? Okay, yeah, Del Rio, you're a former heavyweight champion, but come on. Ziggler should have came out last, just how Miz came out after. Really, Miz should have came out last out of all of them, but that's just another slip up right here. This is classic Randy Orton booking, if I've ever seen it before. He's trying to, suck. I mean, he's already a popular superstar, but he's trying to leech out the Miz's hometown popularity. Instead of, I mean, this is my just my opinion, it should have been Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan versus Ziggler and Rose, but of course Rose wasn't there. And Miz, since it's, it was his hometown, you know, so to speak, it should have been Miz in the main event against either Del Rio, Miz and Del Rio in the main event, or Kofi and Miz versus Del Rio and Dolph Ziggler. Now, that to me would have made more sense, like even right here. But uh, and this is going to make even more more like craziness when I tell you what the main event of this whole SmackDown was instead of having Miz in the main event. Okay, so Dolph Ziggler, Randy Orton, <laughs> Dolph Ziggler, Del Rio, Orton, and Miz. Uh, Ziggler was pretty much non-existent in this whole match scheme. It was mostly Miz getting beat up by Del Rio. Miz, he gets the opportunity to tag in Randy Orton in. <laughs> Uh oh boy, Randy Orton hits two short arm clotheslines, power slam from both Ziggler and Del Rio, suspended DDT on Del Rio. Randy Orton goes for the RKO. It's just like standard Randy Orton stuff. Like his matches bore me all the time. Like every time he steps in the ring, he's just like, oh here comes a power slam, short arm clotheslines. I didn't see that coming. Uh, what else? Suspended DDT, and I don't know, man. Maybe just. Randy Orton, wonders never cease. And so Randy, uh, Randy Orton's going for the RKO. He bats up and Miz blind taps himself in and he has a skull crushing finale on Alberto Del Rio. And Miz is celebrating. And of course, Randy Orton, because he's the apex predator, so to speak, he RKO's Miz because you got to leave the show with an RKO. I mean, uh, yeah, or. Uh, Miz, at least Miz got a signature victory over Alberto Del Rio, which could be a good feud later down in the future, but whatever. You get a Seamus Bit Show promo. Uh, I'm not even going to talk about that. It was just garbage. The Burger T comes out and stops them, from, stops them from fighting. I can talk, I swear. He stops them from fighting, then backstage, he tells Bit Show he has a mystery opponent, and Bit Show is scared. Why? Why would you be scared? What happened to that ironclad contract? Why couldn't you say something like, you know what? I'm not wrestling tonight. Fuck you, Booger T. Ironclad contract. I guess he hadn't seen the memes, but whatever. And why are you scared? You're like the largest athlete and your heavyweight champion, and you're a heel, and you're scared about anybody. <sighs> Another bad booking from Day Day E, but and nothing else is new. Then you get Kane and Wade Barrett. Now, it was basically just a one-minute match until Team Ziggler jumps on Wade Barrett. Not on Wade Barrett, but on Kane. And later on down in the future, I could probably see this match being somewhat of a good pay-per-view match. But it's kind of wearing short. Like I said, Kane, he's a 16-year veteran. It could be one of Barrett's signature victories at a pay-per-view if they want to build him up. Uh, Randy Orton, oh yeah, Daniel Bryan comes out to help Kane. He gets beat down and then... Kofi Kingston, and then of course Randy Orton has come out and saved the day with some RKO's to Sandow and Ziggler because you can't get enough RKO's in one SmackDown. Whatever. Then you get Miz coming out after everybody's been beat up, and they have a stare down between Miz and Orton, which is supposed to be building tension on their team. Then you get Cesaro versus Sin Cara. Sankara, he puts on a pretty good performance right here. You know, he does the standard Lucha Libre stuff on Cesaro. And Cesaro, he sells the moves very well. But you can pretty much see where this would be going because with all the high-flying moves Sankara does, it's only a matter of time before he, like, does something and 
he gets uppercut out of the sky. But of course, but surprisingly, Cesaro just well, yeah, he just lifts him up and then he uppercuts him. So I would it would be a little bit cooler if he would have uh, like caught Sankara coming off the springboard. There was a point in the match where I thought it was going to happen. Cesaro, he, uh, not Cesaro, but Sankara, he goes for a springboard and he hits a hulakarana on uh, Cesaro. I thought right there that was going to be the uppercut spot right there, but whatever. Cesaro wins with the uppercut and then to, into the uh, equalizer. Hey, and then this is the main event. Th- this is the main event. <clears throat> okay, okay. Let me get, let me get, let me drink a little bit of tea real quick. Hold up. This is the main event. This is what people in Ohio who came to see the Miz paid to see. Let me get my throat clear. No homo. Main event, SmackDown. Big Show versus Great Kali. I repeat, instead of having The Miz, the hometown guy, in the main event in Cleveland where he got a tremendous pop, they could have had Miz and Kofi versus Dolphin Del Rio which could have helped both Kofi and the Miz and far as building them up to high level status along with Del Rio, along with not Del Rio, he is already up there, kind of, Dolph. Or they could have just had Miz versus Del Rio. I know a lot of these matches, like I'm saying, if Cody Rose wouldn't have been injured, it probably would have happened, or maybe not because WWE, they kind of been fucking up lately. So, like I said, I would love to see Randy Orton and Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan versus Ziggler and Rose. I think that should have happened, but, you know, Rose got injured or whatever. But let's get back to the main event. Big Show versus Great Khali. And Big Show, God damn it. When Great Khali's music hit, why are you looking scared? You just knocked this dude out like four weeks ago. Like it wasn't nothing. It was like a two-minute swatch match. Swatch. It was a two-minute shit get shit on match. And you just look diamond in that match. You didn't give a fuck. You like it was like arrive, knock out great Kali, leave, and now that you're a world heavyweight champion in the hill, you're a chicken shit hill, who's scared of the great Kali because you hear his music. Really? Okay. Uh, I mean, it was a slow ass match. The crowd did not give two fucks about it. I mean, the crowd, all the momentum in the place, just completely died man i'm not even gonna talk about the promos they did for like the survivor series match between cm punk john cena and ryback the picture pretty much explains it all whatever if you're the pictures is up or whatever but yeah man whoever thought about this match kill yourself man this was the worst main event you could ever do it just sucked all the life out of the arena bitch show wins with a knockout punch um and then you hear Sheamus' music come out, come on, come out, whatever. Big Show gets scared for some reason again. And he starts to leave the arena. Matt Stryker asks him for an interview. He scares off Matt Stryker. He gets on his tour bus. And, of course, Sheamus is on his tour bus because Sheamus can pick locks and Big Show doesn't. Or Big Show doesn't lock his own tour bus. Okay. Um, Big Show gets laid out by Sheamus. Way to book Big Show as a monster heel, Daddy. I'm, I'm doing a thumbs up. I'll be doing vlogs probably like two, three months, so you'll be able to see the thumbs up. So, I mean, it, it was a big improvement from Raw. Starting with a three, it's a, it's a three point five, man. It's watchable. I, that's what all I say, man. I mean, you could, you could, I could have missed this show and still felt good, but whatever. It's just some bad booking on my opinion from this show. You're in Cleveland with one of your mid to high level superstars, main event stars, like mid card. He, a guy a guy like me, he's between main event and mid card status, and he's in his hometown, and he's not in the main event. Wow. Amazing. So let's get into the Survivor Series prediction since I got a little bit of time and it's still on 13 minutes. Okay. First thing is 3MB versus Tyson Kidd and Justin Gabriel. Uh oh boy, this is the match. This is the pre-show match that doesn't mean shit. So I'm gonna have to say 3MB continues their dominance. I can't see Justin Tyson Kidd and Justin Gabriel 
derailing their dominance so far because I can see them going up against Team Hell No in the future. But I don't know. Who was that? Who's the guy on commentary? Josh Matthews said it was going to be Team Cobro. So I don't know. Right now I'm looking at the WWE website. They have Tyson Kidd and Justin Gabriel versus 3MB. But if it's Cobro, I really don't give a fuck about this match. I don't give a fuck about this match regardless. So let's skip ahead. Divas match. E versus Caitlyn. <sighs> okay. If they put the belt on Caitlyn. Caitlyn, if you win with the fucking Scorpion, they'll drop. I hope Steen comes out. I, I don't even know what to say. This horrible. You have the worst finish. You have the worst finisher in Divas history. You're you have massive arms for a girl. And I thought your finisher was gonna be the torture rat. You teased me with the torture rat. I was like, yes, finally a diva who's gonna put people in a submission type maneuver and win like that. But no. It's the shitty ass Scorpion Dell Drop. I hate when Steam does that move because it's a suck ass finisher. It's just a reverse DDT. It's not a fucking finisher. Why? Well, so I think they're probably gonna put the belt on Caitlyn. I think Caitlyn's gonna win this match. Whatever. Cesaro versus R Truth. I think this will be Cesaro's first legitimate te uh, title defense. All the other title defenses, bullshit jobber matches this is the spite what r Truth has become he's still a great wrestler a good wrestler at that i think this will be a match that might possibly steal the show hey is my opinion cesaro i still think he's going to retain it r Truth, that u.s champion what does it do for him not unless they're going to like keep it building with the r Truth cesaro view and how far can that go really uh, then you get the Team Ziggler versus Team Foley. Oh, it's hard to say about this one. Uh, I'm probably leaning toward because, okay, Miz and Ziggler have a match on main event. <sighs> Who needs this more? I think Miz, Miz's team is going to win just because Miz is on the cover. It's how WWE does it. And because, you know, they had that dysfunction because it's the old bait and swerve. So they're going to give Ziggler a signature loss again. Ziggler isn't going to win at a pay-per-view again. That's what I'm thinking. And they're going to give Ziggler the win on main event. Wow. I'm just calling that one out there. Uh, so Ziggler, he's a future heavyweight champion, but he can't win a big match on a pay-per-view. If that happens... Wow. Wow. And then, oh yeah, also, let me talk about this. Since Cody Rose is injured, they've probably have got to replace him. I, I would hate to see Cody Rose injured, not even four days out from a concussion, wrestling in a main event. Not a main event, but a top match. It would be devastating because it could, you know, if you wrestle or do anything after a concussion, it could be life-threatening. And I hope WWE aren't that crass to put him out there and endanger his life. And they even say it on the website where they could have possible replacement for Cody Rhodes. And I'm just going to run down a list of replacements that they have. No bullshit. You can go to the website yourself and see this. Matt Stryker, Michael McGillicuddy, Tensai, Orton, and hold on to your hats, guys, Ricardo Rodriguez, are you fucking kidding me? Matt Stryker? Come on, man. You pay 40 bucks to see Matt Stryker in a main event type Survivor Series match? Come on, man. McGillicuddy? How the people don't know who Michael McGillicuddy is? Tensai? Maybe. I mean, I y'all can see that. Tensai. Otunga? They put Otunga on this team. I... You just know the other team is going to win. Otunga. Let's, let's get rid of that guy. He's a jobber. Jobber status for life. And then Ricardo Rodriguez. Now, the only way I can see Ricardo Rodriguez working, I can see him working over Otunga, McGillicuddy, and Matt Scriker. Hold on. Let me, let me tell you. Only because if Ricardo Rodriguez, it will be a slap 
he he couldn't win the Survivor Series. Like, of course, he couldn't like be the last man surviving. Actually, Ricardo Rodriguez, if he eliminated Randy Orton with a pin or a roll up, <laughs> that would make my day. It would be like, okay, there, Rio, you can't get the job done against uh, Randy Orton, but your announcer does. It would be so funny. I mean, you think about it, Ricardo Rodriguez, he's more over than Del Rio as far as my skills go and with the crowd. It, it would just be so funny, but of course, Randy, no job Orton, I doubt he would let that happen. I doubt it. So I'm going to have to say Tensai. So Tensai, Del Rio, Barrett, Ziggler, Sandow versus, yeah, Team Fall is going to win. Let's skip ahead. Big Show versus Sheamus. The build up to this match, complete shit. Complete shit. Big Show, he needs to retain this belt and get Sheamus the fuck out of here. I want to see somebody brand new against Big Show. That's got to happen because right now how they haven't built, oh, I'm the Big Show. I'm this monster heel who, er who everybody should be afraid of. Oh, shit, there goes Sheamus. I'm scared of him, and he beats me up all the time. I'm so scared. Stop it. Get Please get Sheamus away from Big Show and get him away from the World Heavyweight belt to bring it back to more legitimate status. Sheamus, he brings it down to like a belt less than the U.S. Championship. Please don't let Sheamus does not need to win this belt. If he wins the belt back from Big Show, the belt is back to irrelevant. I'm sorry. Then you get CM Punk versus John Cena, who doesn't deserve a title shot, mind you, versus Ryback. Who doesn't deserve one either because beating jobbers doesn't make you a main inventor. Vince McMahon, I'm looking at you. As much as I I got doubts about this match, I don't I, I don't think Dirty E is stupid enough. I hope not. They're not stupid enough to put the belt on Ryback or John Cena. Hopefully Dolph Ziggler interferes and gets involved and makes Cena lose. And then Brad Maddox comes out and distracts Ryback. Please I hope it was, that wasn't the last we saw Brad Maddox. CM Punk retains, goes on to TLC versus, who would he verse? Probably John Cena again. Oh, my God. Because he's probably right back going to get pinned. Oh, my God. So, we're going to get another. God damn. Just CM Punk versus John Cena a fucking game. I, I know it's going to happen at TLC. But the good thing about that is, I would they do Rock versus Cena again at, at Royal Rumble? Oh, my God. Sam Punk, he needs to retain all the way to Royal Rumble because I people want to see Sam Punk versus Rock. Nobody wants to see John three moves of doom versus The Rock. Nobody. no Nobody wants to see that again. It was a year worth of buildup. For what? Like, John Cena's shitty mic work. I'm turning back into a rapper because it's getting real on the rock. Nobody cares about John Cena besides little kids. CM Punk, he retains this match. Anything else is uncivilized. They put a bet on Ryback. I'm going to stop watching WWE because it's silly. Like, there's no point. Like, I might watch it for Daniel Bryan, but I can't even do reviews on the show because I just want to watch Daniel Bryan and probably some other stuff. Anytime Ryback, if he Ryback wins this match and he gets a WWE championship, I'm turning the shit off. Like, as soon as I see Ryback, shows off. I'm like, I'm not doing interviews. John Cena gets the belt back. I might, man. But still, man. CM Punk, I'm, I, I need to cut this video short because it's already 25 minutes. CM Punk retains. Let me just cut it off right here, man, because I'm getting annoyed. John Cena and Ryback in a main event against CM Punk. Way to go, WWE. Not building up any other mid carters to go against CM Punk. Kofi versus CM Punk would have been a cool thing. Oh no. They gotta they gotta be big and eat a lot of steak and be on steroids to be in the main event. I'm Vince McMahon. I'm an aging dumbass who doesn't know how to book main events anymore. <sighs> I'm out, man. I'll see you guys later. On Survivor Series Sunday.